Hi, ladies and gentlemen, there's a Reverend Jenkins. I might be saying the name wrong. He's recent as far as the internet is concerned and mind watching it. And he's using scripture, Bible, as he said, to justify everything that he talks about. And um, he's basically condemning the whole of society. And I don't complain about that because I do likewise. I mean, my approach is a little different, but I end up saying basically the same thing. He got different reasons. His is um, Bible, and mine is just life. See, I guess he was brought up with the Bible. I went to church, but I wasn't brought up with the Bible. I was brought up with the Spirit. The Spirit is the introduction of God to me, so that's where I pay my attention. I'm not knocking... Uh, this pastor because we agree in most instances not in every instance that make that's okay because we're different but what really gets me ladies and gentlemen in relationship to what he says in relationship how he refers to Bible the thing that tells me or that gives me the same right to say that maybe there is something that I need to question in the Bible is the fact that they started putting pictures in the Bible. And the pictures drew a whole bunch of questions. And you ask, why? It's obvious. And so that makes other things questionable. But when you're talking about the Spirit, I'm not going to spend my time worrying about that because what God has shown me, and, and that is basically that I want to be happy. I want to be thrilled in this life. I really do. <laughs> For some strange reason, I don't believe that there's an individual on earth that does not want to be happy, that does not want to be thrilled, that does not want to live. I believe that's all people. And then I think about what we have involved ourselves in, in this life, that we could actually refer to that we would want to involve in bringing that kind of excitement to our lives. And as I think about it, all of those things, we as people brought them into being, utilizing resources that we had nothing to do with. And yet we have a manifestation of these things. And they are here for everybody who would want to. And so we would imagine as we do them and hope that maybe everyone would. And so we ask ourselves, then what enables everybody in America, in this life, who might want to, what would enable them to engage in it? What would really en enable them? Above all, and we would all agree, it would be money. Because you have to have it. Because everything costs money. And then you would ask the question, turn around and say, well, what is it in this society that would prevent them from engaging in those particulars that would give them their greatest joy. And you say money. Money would prevent them. So then you ask yourself, then wait a minute now. If money would help them on the one hand, but at the same time deny them because there were those that wouldn't have the money, then you should make sure that those prices would be reduced to a cost that everybody would be able to afford or everybody would just have access to money or money wouldn't be necessary at all. I mean, those are some answers. But the truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, as I see it, we have basically turned God's way off. And the reason that we've turned God's way off is because we've never known God's way. We have heard people talk about God's way. We haven't heard people living God's way. And every way that we have tried has been the expressions of somebody, an organization, a man, a woman, a black or white. And at the end of the day, there would be those who were satisfied, three up pink, willing to do anything to be that way. And there were those that were hurting, those who were left out. 
pain and suffering that would always be, they would always be there. And regardless of who was talking, trying to sell something, they never could sell you the way that works for everybody. It's like the guys on television coming and telling you about Big Pharma. Big Pharma's doing this and Big Pharma's doing that. Big Pharma's trying to deny you access <coughs> to other stuff. But these guys or this guy or this person have come up with something that would allow <coughs> him to present to us a different approach and it would be so much cheaper and we should check it out before Big Pharma closes. Da 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 da. Nobody ever comes to you and say, I got something that's absolutely fantastic. It will take care of your problem. All you gotta do is cover the cost. Cover the cost to get it in. <laughs> Just, first of all, cover the cost to get it there. And if and when it works, you can donate. And that stuff go there and works, you donate. But no, it ain't that. I want the money. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this. It appears to me, if it's true, I don't know if it's true, but that was the first lie. And from that, lies have been accepted and been going on ever since. You remember when you were a kid? You remember when you told your first lie? It probably was your mom telling you to don't answer the doorbell or don't answer the phone or say that you're not, that they're not here or some little lightweight lie. Or when you got caught in a situation and you were queried about it and you were frightened and you had a choice before you. Do you tell the truth or do you lie? Do you remember the time you went and told the truth and you thought about it later on and maybe find yourself in that situation again and you had to make a decision to tell the truth or tell a lie and you decided this time to tell a lie and it seemed like the lie saved you. <laughs> and you've been practicing that stuff ever since. Why? Because it seems like the truth was designed to mess you up. It just seemed like that. It really wasn't, but it seemed like it. The reason is that uh, each and every last one of us want to do what we want to do to achieve that which we want to uh, experience. And when stumbling blocks are there, then they call us to think about ways that we can still go around what the problems might be. And there are rules and regulations set in forth to prevent that, which again is a form of bondage because we are not doing it considering us. We're doing it considering me, I, myself. That's the way of the world. But thy will be done on earth as in heaven requires change. And anywhere there is not thy will being done. And someone wakes up, born again, in that environment, that environment begins to change. Because this one will not settle for any of that. It's Righteousness against the world. Righteousness against the world. Righteousness against Republicans. Righteousness against Democrats. Because Democrats and righteousness both are just sides of a failed situation. God is righteous and it works. I'm going to leave it there. Talk to you later.